author opinion of Dennis Keane at the history, geography and architecture, culture and life manners of Kazakhs in the program Discovering Kazakhstan. Salam, Privyat, and hello. I'm Dennis Keen, and today on Discovering Kazakhstan, we'll be discovering the natural wonders of Mangistau. A vast arid region in the far west of the country, Mangastau is known for its beautiful geological formations. Mangastau in Kazakh means eternal mountain. And we're going to be seeing some of these eternal mountains a little bit later, but let's start our program by seeing something else that makes Mangastau special, its access to the sea. Kazakhstan may be a landlocked country, but here we have the Caspian, the largest lake in the world, and we can go sit on a sandy beach and look at its turquoise waters. Yes, it may look as if I'm strolling along some Mediterranean isle, but this is the Caspian Sea. This should be the pride of Kazakhstan. It's called Golubaya Bukhta, which means the Blue Bay. If you go across the sea over to Azerbaijan, there's some kind of pollution sometimes on the beach, and other beaches in Kazakhstan can be cliffy or rocky. But this one is, has amazing sand and seashells, and it's a beautiful place to walk and enjoy the sounds of this surf. In local Turkic and Persian dialects, 
this sea was called Hazar. It was a sea full of surprises, starting with its fantastic fauna, like the giant fish called sturgeon that yield valuable caviar, or the fuzzy white Caspian seals that live on nearby islands. Its mineral resources were a pleasant surprise as well, as the oil deposits under these waters have powered an economic boom in Kazakhstan. Yet any thoughts of that black gold are far from the minds of a Caspian beachgoer. The sands and waters here are immaculately clean. As a Californian boy who grew up on the beach, of course I feel right at home, but there's something very surreal about sitting here on the shore of the Caspian Sea. Just a few minutes ago, we were riding to the step and there were camels with their silhouettes on the horizon and it was just perfectly flat and you felt like you were in the middle of the desert. right next to this beautiful turquoise body of water. But what's even stranger is that there's nobody else here but me. If you were to go to a beach like this in California, it would be full of people with umbrellas and towels laid out, and you'd have to fight for space. But there's nobody here at all. Kazakhs these days would rather hop on a plane and go to Turkey or Dubai for a beach holiday. But I say they should stay in Kazakhstan and enjoy the natural wonders that they have, just like this place, Golubaya Bukhta. The Caspian has become the pride of Western Kazakhstan, with more and more tourists every year coming to the sea. The usual tourist resorts have popped up, but what's remarkable is just how unspoiled so much of the coast is here. For most of the hundreds of miles of coastline, there are no reggae clubs, no colored cocktail straws in the waters, no hawkers pushing cheap souvenirs. Instead, it's you and the water, a kind of platonic ideal of what a beach can and should be. The water is cold, but not too cold. The sand hot, but not too hot. It feels as if you're on the sandy beach of a tourist brochure for a tourist trap. But then you remember that you're in Kazakhstan and you have the whole place to yourself. Golubaya Bukhta. Locals repeat the name as if it were some mystical land. Many lifelong Oktau citizens, we found, admit that they've never been here despite the short drive. The path here, for now, is inconspicuously marked, and I wouldn't be surprised if many people would like to keep this place a secret. After all, there's really nothing like this anywhere else in the country. One of the things that makes Golubaya Buhta special is that most of the rest of Kazakhstan's Caspian shore looks like this, these limestone cliffs, which although they're really quite beautiful, they're not really ideal for beachgoers. But at this one special spot along the Caspian coast, the cliffs give way to the beautiful sands of this special bay.
The snakes are everywhere here, leaving their serpentine trails in the sand. The locals say they're not dangerous, so don't leap out of your seat screaming just yet. But this was just the beginning of our animal discoveries near the Caspian. Nearby, there is a special place full of wild things, reptilian and amphibian. From the Caspian, this long gorge runs up into this dead end where we find this beautiful deep little pond called Lake Saura. And locals call it Turtle Pond because there's a whole tribe of turtles here. I can see one swimming down there right now. And though I can't hear the calls of the turtles, what I can hear is the calls of the marsh frogs. They have a very specific kind of mating call. And I can hear the chirp of these beautiful swallows that are flying all around this area and the most beautiful blue and green feathers on their breasts. After such a hot day out in the steppe, I got a little sunburnt, but here it's very cool. It's a perfect little oasis away from the heat of the Mangostau Desert. To appreciate Lake Saura, you can do like I did and approach it from above, hanging your feet over the cliff and enjoying the view. But you can also approach it from below, hiking up the gorge and coming to the pond itself on foot. There, you'll get up closer to the turtles, but also get a surprise. Hundreds of seashells litter the shore, reminding us that this place was once connected to the nearby Caspian. It was oases like these that once formed the basis for Mangostau society. Oases were often associated with holy saints and Sufi teachers, and both religious traders and Silk Road merchants would make their way from oasis to oasis looking for water, wisdom, or a caravanserai to spend the night. As you sit and enjoy the cool quiet here, you're never far away from the hot, barren plain that surrounds it, the steppe. This is the defining landscape of Kazakhstan, the vast Eurasian steppe. But even those who know it best, the Kazakh nomads and shepherds, are liable to get lost in such a featureless place as this. So they put up these towers of rocks, what we would call cairns, so that they can never lose their way. And if you stand at this cairn and look right across the steppe, over there in the distance on the horizon, you can see another one. And I can imagine how shepherds take out their animals here on the steppe and move from cairn to cairn, moving from pasture to pasture. The English tradition of cairns comes from the Celts, but people all over the world have thought to mark their landscape by stacking stones high. In nearby Mongolia, piles of stones are called ovo, and pilgrims will circumambulate a mound three times after leaving a stone of their own. Here, the stones have no spiritual significance, but they do have their own secrets. If you look closely at the cairn, you can see that these are special kind of rock that is found all over Mangostau that they call in Russian rakushichnik, which means seashell rock. It's a kind of limestone that has all these little fossils in it. These are marine organisms that were once living in the Tethys Sea, an ancient sea here that was in western Kazakhstan three million years ago, and now they're embedded in this sedimentary rock. This rock, by the way, makes a very great carving material, and it's used to make gravestones all around western Kazakhstan.
Imagine that the entire ground here is made of this special seashell rock. For miles around, millions of fossils sleep under our feet. The material world of manga style's nomads was defined by this stuff, from gravestones to winter shelters. And nowadays, it's used as a cladding material for modern homes as far away as the former capital of Almaty. There, manga style Rakuchishnik has always been a great brand name, a beautiful pinkish stone that has undeniable character. Hey, well look what we have here. This is kind of step tortoise. There's not that many animals that live out on the step except for this guy. And he's all alone out here. I think he must have come to this cairn trying to find his way to the next pasture. You want to come along with us? Huh? I'll race you to the car. Let's go. Come on, faster. The tortoises are the most conspicuous of steppe creatures, having their thick shells for protection from predators and the pounding rays of the sun. If we were to wait patiently for the heat to subside and sit still as sculptures, we might spy hedgehogs and gazelles, lizards, and even something called the sand cat. Here, away from civilization, is a wide world of biodiversity. If there's any animal that's emblematic of that great trade route, the Silk Road, it is the camel. And though traders may not be coming through on camel caravans anymore, they prefer the big semi-trucks, camels are still kept for their milk. They ferment the milk to make a special product called shobat. Kazakhstan is special. In manga style, you can find two different kinds of camels. You can find the two humped Bactrian camels and the one humped dromedary, one of the only places in the world where these two species coexist. The camel's milk my new friends would produce is considered by Cossacks to be a kind of traditional medicine, having cleansing properties. With their considerable slobber and startling sounds, they may seem intimidating to the uninitiated, but milking a camel is actually a cinch. You don't even have to sit down because they're so tall. Manga style's camel's milk, whether fermented or otherwise, is bragged about by manga stallions for its bouquet of grassy flavors, lent from this special local assortment of desert herbs. Shubat elsewhere can be watery, they say, but not here. Here, it's rich and full of nuance. The step in a bottle, like liquid landscape. Manga style is not known just for its steppe and its beaches, but for the wild geological formations you can find in its barren deserts. One feature, the Karakia Depression, was once known throughout the Soviet Union because it was the lowest point in the massive territory of that former state. Now it's the lowest point in Kazakhstan, and it draws visitors not just for its statistical appeal, but for its otherworldly appearance. It's funny to think that in this parched landscape, all of this once was underwater. 
about 3 million years ago, there was an ancient sea here called the Tethys Sea. Though as the tectonic plates shifted and the continents moved apart, the sea disappeared and instead were left with these beautiful rock formations, many of which are embedded with ancient fossils. It's because of this soft sedimentary rock that the earth here could be carved away by the elements to such an extreme depth. Millennia of wind and water passing over these stones have created the stunning landscape that we see today. From the top of the road, we couldn't see much of the canyon, but after about a 40 minute hike, we've come down here to the very edge. And at 40 kilometers long, 132 meters deep, it may not be the Grand Canyon, but it's definitely grand enough for me. It is a beautiful sight. While well, the rest of the landscape around here is quite barren, the canyon itself is something of an oasis. Down there you can find Corsac foxes and a kind of sheep called Mouflon. And it turns out this is one of the only places in the entire Mangastau province where you can go mushroom hunting. Down there there's little streams that collect, even a little pond, and that moisture makes this one of the only places to collect these fungi. Mushrooms in Kazakh are called Sangrao Kulakh, which translates literally as deaf ears. Nomads rarely ate these ears of the earth, but modern day scavengers of different nationalities are drawn to places like this to hunt for shrooms. It's not all they hunt for. People enter this unique world in search of herbal grasses that have been used for Kazakh traditional medicine for centuries. The steppe absolutely smells of sagebrush and fragrant plants that Kazakhs knew by scent alone. Easier to spy are the tall cane reeds, she, that would be collected to make reed mats for lining the interior walls of a yurt. Wrapped with wool fibers, bundles of reeds would become orderly tapestries. People would take these raw materials and give them meaning, and the materials would remind them of the land in which they live. vegetation here is mostly low and shrubby, but the most tree-like thing that you can find is called Saksawul. And you'll see this hardy kind of bush growing all over Kazakhstan, and it's famous for being a great firewood that's used to make barbecue. So they put little pieces of meat on a skewer, call it shashlik, cook it over this kind of bush here, and they say that this wood gives a very specific taste that makes the shashlik like no other.
If you're looking for a place to have a nice short hike or set up a picnic, locals can show you to the special place called Miss Melavoy. It translates into English as chalky point because all along here are these gorgeous, breathtaking chalk cliffs. Now, from here, you can enjoy this amazing view out over the Caspian. You can see the tankers coming in to set up at Octau Port. You can see the yachts out in the bay. Enjoy the view, but be careful because the cliffs here are quite sharp and you don't want to stumble over. It's certainly a challenge to keep away from the edge because the exciting sound of the surf beckons from down below. You can carefully get close and watch the waves, imagining how the power of the moon and tides have challenged these cliffs for eons. The salty sea foam slowly wearing away at the chalk. Like the limestone, these relatively soft materials make for stunning vistas as the elements sculpt the land's end with subtle beauty. Elsewhere in Mangostau, the earth has been carved by another potent force, the seemingly ceaseless winds of the desert, a land that is flat for miles suddenly rises and rises and becomes spotted with dramatically vertical formations. Wind carved sculptures that can be as small as a car or as big as a mountain. Geologists call them ventifacts or yardings, and they have become Mangostal's defining feature. In these rugged places, you'll find a rich palette running from red to orange to chalky white. Desert landscapes like those in Mangastau are often derided as drab and colorless, but I've actually found that this place is full of color. The blue turquoise water of the Caspian, the brown and green of the steppe, but I've never before seen a white like the cliffs here. Behold the beauty of Kapam Sai. They say that this canyon is named after a famous local warrior named Kapam Batur, who practiced the Sufi Islam that was popular in his day. While he was prostrated in prayer one morning near the canyon, his legs were cut off by an enemy who was jealous of his success and power. Then something magical happened. The legless Kapam Batur flew across the canyon landing in a place where he could die in peace. Ever since, his spirit watches over this place, and the peace he found here can still be felt. Far as it is from population centers like Almata and Astana, Mangastau is a place that even many Kazakhs have never visited. And that's a shame, because I have found this place to be continuously breathtaking. From its sandy beaches to its awesome canyons, Mangastau's natural treasures are truly national treasures. Thank you for discovering this special place with me today. Until next time, Sao Bol, Paka, and goodbye.